Good morning. Good morning. My name is Sherelle. Welcome to Wells Church. I will never forget Saturday, July the 4th, 2008. And it's not because it's the date we celebrate our independence. I remember it because it's the date my doctor called to tell me that my test had come back positive for breast cancer. Someone asked me recently how I felt when I was told my test was positive. It's hard to describe. I felt numb, I could not think. I don't remember what I said to him or if I said anything. I remember that the phone call was brief and I remember having this overwhelming feeling of helplessness. I felt alone, I knew that the diagnosis was true, but I didn't want to believe it. I must admit that I cried that day. I didn't cry about myself or because I was afraid of dying. I cried because I was worried about who would take care of my 84-year-old mother or who would take care of my brother who was diagnosed with breast cancer in 2007 and who would take care of my beloved Jack Russell Terrier, Bobo. I knew that none of my family would take him and if you've ever owned a Jack Russell Terrier, you will certainly understand. <laughs> so many thoughts were spinning in my brain. I hugged Bobo so hard that I know he thought he had cancer, not me. One minute I was crying and the next, next minute I wanted to yell at God, how could you do this to me? Then I felt guilty for wanting to yell at him. I did continue to talk to God though about my concerns, my mother, my brother, Bobo, my fears about not being able to manage on my own. You know how we are. We often give our problems to God and then we snatch them back like we think we're smarter than him. And then it was like a light switch flipped on in my head. I stopped crying, a calmness came over me, and I knew that everything was going to be all right. You see, I had prayed to God to help me find a place to live where I would feel safe and Bobo and I would be happy. And God had answered my prayer. That's a story of its own, but it all started in 2005 with Hurricane Katrina. My mobile home was not destroyed by Hurricane Katrina. It was destroyed by the rats and possums and raccoons that came out of the woods and I needed a new home. And not only did God provide me with a place to live, he arranged for me to get into it in June before I learned about the cancer. I had surgery and chemo and four months of radiation five days a week. I had good days and bad days, but of course I'll leave out the details. The purpose of my life has changed after I was diagnosed with cancer. It was a very empowering experience. I became more spiritually focused and had a closer relationship with God. I placed my faith in him. I knew he would lead me through the difficult times as well as the good times. God has given me a future, eternal life and hope. And hope is not about everything turning out okay or the way I want it to. It's about being okay, no matter how things turn out. I am content. I am at peace. I am happy. God has truly blessed me. Time is a precious commodity. I'm almost 71 years old. My life is scarred with mistakes. Am I a perfect Christian? No. But I pray that I will make a difference in 2018 by honoring and serving my Lord and Savior. None of us can help everyone, but all of us can help someone. And when we help them, we serve Jesus. And it's not always about money. We can read to someone who can't see anymore. We can walk their dog. We can take them a meal. We can take them to the doctor. We can just call and visit with them. And who would not want 
to miss a chance to do that. Thank you for letting me share this with you. Thank you. We will now have our call to worship. Please remain standing as we share the opening sentence. Welcome, rejoice, for every day is an opportunity for a new journey. We come together seeing the journey of Christ, seeing the path that God lays before us instead of the path provided by the world. And let's do the prayer. Guide us, we pray. for the new year. Amen. Please remain standing as we sing all verses of hymn 254, We Three Kings.
Y'all look good. Thanks for being here. I appreciate you getting up and being here. Let's affirm our faith together. If you're not familiar with this, page 881 in the back of your hymnal. Some of us refer to that as the Apostles' Creed, and we affirm our faith together by saying it together. So if you feel so led, please join me as we affirm our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. The third day he arose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Take a few moments and pass the peace of Christ amongst yourselves. Time to herd the cats. Yeah. <laughs> if you would, look on the inside cover of your bulletin today, and let's look at our life of the church. Welcome to Wells. We celebrate Epiphany today, and you did a great job of singing We Three Kings. If you're uh, interested in being part of a book club, you'll see the book club information there at Sarah and Richard Campbell's home. Uh, they're finishing up a book called Middlesex this week, and then uh, Salvage the Bones, which is a story about uh, post-Katrina. If you haven't read that book, it's a great book and it'd be a good, good group to be involved with. Uh, our Wednesday activities kick back up this week after a little hiatus because of the holidays, but uh, everything is, is set and uh, rolling. We'll still be in the James Club building for a couple more weeks, and then uh, you'll be hearing more about in the coming weeks in regards to our uh, grand boy, bond voyage of our new fellowship hall and area downstairs that we'll have uh, christening on on the uh, 21st of this month. Uh, BJ will be leading a group uh, that will be attending a disaster response training on the, uh, it says the 27th, but isn't it the 20th? Or is it the 27th? Is that 27th? They're at Madison UMC, so if we could get uh, three or four of y'all, I know Heather had mentioned earlier this morning in the early service that she'll be calling some specific people about being involved in that, but um, even mentioned that, that once this training takes place, that that group of people will be able to go and serve on site at various locations as needed. Uh, and notice that the, the training for, if you're part of the board or the council, or would like to be involved in some leadership training for our United Methodist Church, uh, you'll see that on January 20th at Anderson United Methodist Church. Altar flowers today are provided by Jeff and Debbie in celebration of their 39th wedding anniversary. So would you guys like a blessing? Okay. All right. So a little bit we'll come forward and we'll do a blessing for you guys. Other birthdays, anniversaries, announcements? Yes.
you. Kind of goes along with what uh, Sherelle was saying this morning. Jeff. Um, first, thank you for prayers. Everything's going well. Second, uh, just had our 25th uh, anniversary. Okay. Would you guys like a blessing too? Okay. So we'll have that. All right. Other announcements? We'll do announcements and we'll come back and do birthday. Yes, sir. Uh, we're going to be celebrating a birthday for Keith Tonkel next week. It was always important to keep the celebrate his birthday by participating in the Martin Luther King parade. And so uh, I hope he, I got a chance to give each one of you a bookmark that we're going to be handing out. And we have beads uh, that we're going to be handing out. This was always extremely important to Keith. And so we'll be meeting down uh, here at the back of the church from 8 to 8.30. And then we'll go over and we'll practice a lot of patience about getting ready to go. And, and, and the march is down uh, Martin Luther King Boulevard. And so I want to invite any of you that will to come join us and be a part of this. Um, we're going to have a few snacks to bring and, and that kind of thing. Um, you may want to bring your Depends. Um, <laughs> and, uh, that's possible. <laughs> but the, um, um, anyway, really want y'all to, if you got an old car or something like that, you know, something, a tractor or anything like that, it, it, they're not fancy floats or anything, but just it's just about being there. We'll have the church band. So some of the people that may want to come, um, that aren't going to actually march or anything, can ride in the band, and then uh, others will have cars in the head. But we'd really love for you to join us. If you are going to join us, if you let me know, uh, either by texting me or, or writing on a blue card, you don't have my number, and, and just say, hey, I'm going to participate, put your number there. I'll try to be texting out some reminders later on in the week uh, about this. So thank you all, and uh, let's have a party. Yeah. <laughs> And in case, in case you don't use Depends, there are some porta potties that will be along the route. Yes, thank you so much. Yes, Camille. Here in Dixon Sunday School class, um, we did taking on a little mini ministry that we have to uh, gather um, magazines for the food pantry class. They don't have the money to, for magazine subscriptions and that sort of thing. A lot of them don't have access to the internet. So we like to get them magazines like the Reader's Digest. Today. Yeah. Other announcements? Okay, cool. Let's go to birthdays and anniversaries. We'll pick that back up. Yes, ma'am. We need to bless Leanne for 32 years. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I, I'm not going to touch that one. Yes. Okay, cool. Okay. Uh, grandson Gavin will be nine on Saturday. Tina. My sister had a birthday on the 28th. Okay. Yes, sir. Uh, my birthday was this past week, and my sister, brother in law, and niece are just coming. Okay, Kevin. Steve Reno's birthday will be <coughs> Good deal. Miss Loran. My sweet dad was over 100 years old. Okay. Ken. My sister, January 8th. Okay. Yeah, share. Okay. Keep correct. My mom had one this past Thursday. Okay. <clears throat> yes, ma'am. Yes, Bob. Stepdaughter, granddaughter, and sister. All right. Anybody else before we sing? Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. God bless you and Happy birthday to you. We'll do this uh, blessing if you would like to come forward and be a part of this, and then we'll come back and do prayer requests in a moment.
the tough thing about this is that Brazier does this so much better than I do, but we're not going to ask him to bless his own. Uh, <laughs> Everybody squeeze in where you can. I do. Let us, uh, let us go to God. Gracious Creator, we gather in your name this morning and we remember the words from Genesis in the beginning. And in the beginning you created us one for another. We are so grateful. You saw fit to bring these couples together when they least expected it, perhaps. You brought their paths together, made them cross, and then helped develop within them a matter of trust and reciprocity, strength, and deep, deep love. And so for their continued life together, we pray, gracious God, gracious God pour out your blessings, pour out your blessings. On these, many years. on these many years, continue to live in love within their home, continue to live in love within their home, within their hearts, within their hearts, and may their love be a reflection, and may their love be a reflection for all the world to for know. All the world. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Amen. Happy Please. anniversary. Oh, yesterday. I'm just weak, that's all. <laughs> if my math was correct, that was about 96 years worth of, uh, worth of love up here. So thank you, Heather. As we move into a time of prayer, um, not everybody can, can voice what they want, but let me share these that we do have, and then we'll have a time of sharing. Uh, we want to remember uh, Nancy Moore and her family and the loss of her cousin who passed away. Uh, Ron Forsyth is back at St. D, and he will have a, a bone marrow uh, scan tomorrow, so be in prayer for him. They don't know exactly what time. <coughs> And I see Margaret is here. Margaret had an unfortunate fall, but uh, you fractured your right shoulder. But you, you look good, and you're, you look like you're saying, who dat? You can eat, and so you're good. Okay. All right. Uh, I talked with Joey Armstrong yesterday, and many of you have prayed for Terry off and on for these last few months. Um, she is having some complications and will have a surgery tomorrow, so please be in prayer for her. Uh, we continue to remember Nancy Watson, who is at hospice in Ridgeland. Uh, Loy lost his brother uh, this past week, and the, the uh, service was yesterday, so we continue to remember you and your family. Uh, Brenda Trigg, uh, her sister in Austin, she's asked for prayer for her. Uh, Lucy Hansford was on the prayer list this week for cataract surgery, which she'll have again this week. Uh, and we continue to remember those that deal with cancer, uh, Bob Caskey, Melanie Moreno, uh, Sherry, who is here and looking good, uh, Ann Herlihy, Michael McDuff, uh, and others. Um, I talked with Joy Gates yesterday, and Bob is in the hospital uh, with a respiratory infection. Possibly will go home today, but please remember them. Also, uh, Katie Donnell, many of you are familiar with her, uh, and uh, the family of John Ingram. Some of you may know him from, from Hal and Mouse uh, and his loss. Um, are there others that you would have? Yeah. Um, one of my nurses, Stephanie, her husband's brother, um, Josh Duncan, was found dead at his home um, over New Year's. He's 34. Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah, Jeff. Um, it's in hospital with congested heart failure and pneumonia. Her name's Jermaine Walker. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yeah. Um, our son, Zach, who is in that familiar young adult state of crossroads, doesn't really know what he's doing next, and I, I just want to lift him up. You can echo that. Thank you. Yeah. Let's pray for our children and teachers and all 
as they draw back to work. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, Linda. Anybody else? Okay, let's go to God in prayer. I'll give you a few moments to voice your prayer silently, and then I'll lead us corporately together. God, we gather in this place just about every Sunday of every year. And we do so for many, many reasons, but for one of the most important reasons is to share part of our lives. And for these who are a part of our life, uh, individually and collectively, we remember them and the, the various and sundry difficulties that they may be facing. And we don't want to get too bogged down in the difficulties of life because we know that many times those are the greatest blessings that we have, but only to be seen later on down the road. So for these that have been mentioned this morning verbally and those who are still silently in the depths of our soul, we ask your hand and your blessing upon them each and every one. We thank you for your presence in this place and for your love. And we remember at this time the words that your son taught us to pray in praying. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Please stand as we sing verses 1, 2, and 4 of hymn 384, Love Divine, All Love Excelling. standing as
as we share Psalms 29, verses 1 through 11, found on page 761 of the hymnal. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings, ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory of his name. Worship the Lord in holy splendor. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders the Lord upon many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon to skip like a calf, and Syrian like a young wild oak. ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oaks to swirl and strips the forest bare. And in this temple all pride and glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood. The Lord sits enthroned as ruler forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. prayer. God, much you have given to us. You tell us in your word that you desire mercy, not sacrifice. So may we give with merciful hearts this day. In the name of Christ. Amen.
Well, I've been trying to save my voice. I've got my fisherman's friend right here. I won't be shaking hands or hugging necks today, but I'm on the tail end of this thing, and so uh, I'll meet you at the back, but uh, let's just be on the safe side and not hug and kiss on one another, shall we? What? In the spirit, kiss me in the spirit, that's right. Thank you, Marguerite. I want you to take a look around because you can walk in uh, probably 100 different churches, maybe even 200 different churches in the Jackson area this morning, and you know what you will not find? You will not find the Christ candle in the Advent wreath. You will not find the greenery or the banners. My 25th is over, let's just, you know, take it all down and get ready for the next big holiday, Valentine's Day. <laughs> we leave the greenery up to remind us that we have been in the season of Christmas, the 12 days, and they conclude with the epiphany. We sang, we three kings of Orient are. Some people can't stand singing that song. We made you sing every last verse of it. It tells a story, though. It tells a story about light. And going into this new year, I don't know about you, but I need to be reminded of the light. I need to be reminded that the light shines in the darkness and the darkness does not overcome it. I don't need to hear that just once a year on Christmas Eve. I, I, need, to, I need to hear that every day. And so you get a good balance uh, today. I wish, I wish this is one Sunday, John. I wish everybody had come to the 8.30 and 11 because you got baptism at 8.30 and epiphany at 11. And it's all about new beginnings and second chances. The reading from Isaiah is an epiphany reading. You'll find it on the back of your bulletin. Arise, shine, for your light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. For darkness shall cover the earth, and thick darkness the peoples. But the Lord will rise upon you, and his glory will appear over you. Nations shall come to your light, and kings of the brightness of your dawn. Lift up your eyes and look around. They all gather together. They come to you. Your sons shall come from far away, and your daughters shall be carried on their nurses' arms. 
Then you shall see and be radiant. Let me say it again. Then you shall see and be radiant. Your heart shall thrill and rejoice because the abundance of the sea shall be brought to you. The wealth of the nations shall come to you. A multitude of camels shall cover you. The young camels of Midian and Ephah, all those from Sheba shall come. They shall bring gold and frankincense and shall proclaim the praise of the Lord. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Will you pray with me? And now, O God, may the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, and each heart gathered here be acceptable and pleasing in thy sight. You are our rock, our Redeemer. You are our radiant light. Amen. So it's the first Sunday of 2018, y'all. It's the first Sunday of 2018, and we're here. (laughs) You're here. You've started off 2018 in the house of the Lord, and whether you're visiting from out of town or whether, you know, your, your, your mom or your dad kicked you out of bed early this morning uh, or whether you had a guilt feeling about something and thought, well, I better go to church. It doesn't matter. Of all the places you could be beginning, we're beginning here. With both Christmas and New Year's Eve falling on a weekend, a lot of us have been traveling and maybe visiting family and friends maybe taking some well-needed vacation time. And some of you I'm seeing for the first time since the middle of December because you've been on the, on the road and we give thanks for God's traveling mercies and that you're back here with us. Some of you may be here today because church has become part of your 2018 resolution or what I talked about in the newsletter, your 2018 covenant to be more attentive, more present. Thank you. We're off to a good start, I think. (coughs) John and I balanced one another out today, as I said. Bookends of baptism and epiphany. Either way, they each point to the same thing on so many levels, a new beginning, a new start. And for the writer of Isaiah, It is about restoration and discovery. Remember those two words. For the writer of Isaiah, it is about restoration and discovery. In a word, it's about light. The gospel lesson for today, for the epiphany, we did not read, but it's the familiar one from Matthew's gospel. Chapter 2, verses 1 through 12. We sang that hymn, and it told the story of three sages, three wise ones who were directed to follow a star and to make it to wherever that star stopped and then to report back to Herod. But when they arrived at the place of the birth, they had an epiphany. It's from a Greek word, I'm not going to try to pronounce it, but I've got it right here, which literally means reveal, reveal. A deeper understanding would be something along the line of an unexpected appearance or manifestation. And today we understand the use of that word according to at least one dictionary definition, as a sudden intuitive perception. A sudden intuitive perception of or insight into the reality or essential meaning of something. You get it? Don't use that word lightly. Have you ever had an epiphany before? 
I used it lightly this morning when I had the inner essential perception that I did not need to be serving communion to you today. We'll hand that off to someone else. But don't use that word lightly. An epiphany is not new knowledge just for the sake of new knowledge. It is not new knowledge just for the sake of new knowledge. It is informed new knowledge that causes us to make a change. If we don't make the change, I don't suppose that means we never had an epiphany in the first place. I, it, it could, I don't know. That'd be up to God to make that decision. But an epiphany is an informed change that causes us, an informed revelation that causes us to make a change, to do, to do something different. It's not knowledge for the sake of new knowledge. It's informed new knowledge that encourages us to do something differently. And so those three wise sages who were not Jewish made a change. They came to that light and they had an epiphany. Something was revealed to them that this indeed was royalty before them. They brought the gold and the frankincense and the myrrh. Matthew connected it right back to Isaiah. That this was royalty, perhaps a Messiah. And not only did they proclaim it, but the very realization of this new thing, that, that epiphany that happened, think about it like a, like a bolt of lightning that just strikes you and you and it shakes you up. That very revelation, it gave them power. It informed them. It empowered them and gave them strength. That's what an epiphany does at its best. It reverses reality. And so those three wise ones, they said, <laughs> we're not going back the same way we came. And we're not going to tell Herod any of this. We'll go a different way, and we'll tell some other people. The writer of Matthew makes sure that two components are present, light, a star, and gifts fit for royalty, gold and frankincense. An epiphany is about discovery and restoration. We learn this in Matthew's gospel, but the writer of Matthew learned it long before then. Because Isaiah 60, 1 through 6, is about discovery and restoration. It is about light that reveals, light that reveals a revelation, an epiphany. And the revelation is a new discovery, something not known before. And the discovery is that after a long season of darkness, a long season of darkness for the exiled of Jerusalem. They have come into a season of light. A long season of darkness, an epiphany. They have come into a season of light. The first verse, arise, shine, for your light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon you. Arise, shine, for our light has come and the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. Glory of the Lord, that word glory, it means light. The light of the Lord is upon us. 
Isaiah 61 through 6 is part of a longer poem, a beautiful poem, and I hope you'll read it in its entirety because it's what follows a lot of passages that are about judgment and repentance. And now we have light. But not only light and restoration, but light that empowers and emboldens. Light that told the exiled of Israel, there is something more. Light and restoration that holds us responsible to let our light shine. It was not enough for the exiled of Israel to come out of the darkness and into the season of light. It said the light, the radiance of God was upon them. They became the light and were empowered by that epiphany to be the light and a proclamation. The Lord will rise upon us and God's glory, God's light, will appear over us, verse 2. Now, during Advent and Christmas, we talked, I say we, I talked a lot about darkness, about the struggles that many of us have faced over 2017. Cancer, car wrecks, unanticipated illnesses, sudden loss, even suicides, unresolved conflicts and grudges, unforgiveness in our hearts. I talked a lot about that during the season of Advent. But in the child of the manger, we find hope and second chances. In the child of the manger, we find restoration and light. Those who have walked in darkness have seen a great light. Now, when I say what I'm about to say right now, don't go home and get mad at me. Don't feel like I am trivializing your pain or your sadness. That's not the intent. I know that for many of us out there, it doesn't matter how many epiphanies we have, how many candlelight communion Christmas Eve services we have, how many times we read Isaiah. For a lot of us, it's still pretty dark. But I want to walk into 2018 as a child of the light. Okay, that's Heather. I want to walk into 2018 as a child of the light. Don't you? I'm not saying there's no darkness. There is. But I don't want darkness to control me. I want to control the darkness. So, damn you, darkness. I'm going to walk as a child of the light. Damn you, darkness. I am going to walk as a child of the light. I want to walk as a child of the light. I will walk as a child of the light. Because that is the promise that has been made to me and that has been lived out and witnessed over and over and over again, not only throughout our scripture, but in your lives. I see it. The writer of Isaiah, not naive. The writer knows that the people of Israel have been in exile a very long time, and they may be suspicious or skeptical of this good news. Like we may be a little suspicious and skeptical about whether or not we can truly walk as a child 
of the light. The writer also knows that those in exile are now scattered all over the world. It's going to take time for word to get around that they've come out of the darkness and into a a season of light. And on top of that, the writer also knows that the people of Zion are living in great, great poverty. If there was ever a community that had the odds stacked against them for living in the light, it was this community. But here's what it goes on to say. My paraphrase. If you will let your light shine, nations and kings will come to you. Verse 3. If you will let your light shine, your sons and daughters scattered throughout the world will be drawn to your light. Verse 4. If you will let your light shine, your poverty will diminish as the wealth of nations will come to you. Verse 5. Isaiah 61 through 6. It is about discovery and restoration. How is it possible? How will we ever have the strength and courage to shine the way Isaiah wants us to shine. Here's how. You see, I, I misspoke just a little bit in those earlier sentences. It isn't actually our light that's got to shine. It's the light of God in us that must shine. It is the light of Christ within us that must shine. Now I could end this sermon right here, but if I did, I'd leave out something really important, I believe. Because somehow we gotta be able to make some kind of sense of this for our own particular concrete lived life. So here it goes. This is my, I'm gonna take a stab at it. If you feel like you are a child of the dark, not of the light, if you find yourself walking in darkness all the time, do something. Look around. Are you by yourself? Are you alone? Find someone that you believe is walking in the, in the light and go to them and say, hey, can I, can I walk with you for a little while? Or if you look around and, and you find that you've surrounded yourself only with other people walking in darkness, Everybody you hang out with is walking in darkness. Do something about it. Now, I'm not suggesting that you abandon those folks. They need you as much as anyone. But you've got to look around, and you've got to add some children of the light to your life. Look around. You don't have to abandon anyone. But you've got to add some light children on the journey. That's if you're walking in the darkness. If you're walking in the light, if you feel like you're walking in the light, if you feel you are a child of the light, if you find yourself walking in the light more often than not and you feel so good about it, then do something. Look around. And if you find that you are only surrounded by others who walk in light, surrounded by children of light, and no more, do something about it. You don't have to abandon those light children of yours. But we do have a biblical mandate to look beyond them, to see 
into the dark and to find those who walk in the dark. You know what I mean. And you know who they are. Now reach out and take their hand and say, will you walk with me for a little while? <coughs> Doesn't cost a thing. Now I'm going to do something here, and if it's a mistake, call and tell me later. I know some of you are walking in the darkness. I know who you are. And you're looking for that person to, to say, hey, come and walk with me for a little while. That person who walks in the light. So I'm going to help you out a little bit. Jan Hawthorne right here. Girl can't see a lick. She is walking in the light, though. Here is a child of the light right here. If you look back over here on this side, there's Diane Parkinson, parked between the two hardest-headed men I know in the church. <laughs> she is walking in the light, my friends. This guy right here, folks call him knee, but I call him Abednego. He is a child of the light. He is walking in the light. No, I could go on and on. I could go all the way around this room. But here, oh, wait. I forgot one. Now, this woman right here, Patricia, you and Jan have something in common. But she walks in the light. You looking for somebody to walk with? Come on, she said. But I guess that you have to want to walk in the light. See, light reveals a lot of things. It reveals the good things and the tough things. Do you want to be a child of the light? Do you want to be a child of the light? Do you want to walk in the light? Oh, do you believe that, Nancy? <laughs> if you would like to be a child of the light on this, the first Sunday of 2018, say these words and say it like you mean it. I want, I want to, walk to walk as a child of the light. Of the light. I want to walk, to walk as a child of the light. Of the light. Amen, hallelujah, and may it be so now and forevermore. Amen. We confess at this beginning of the year that we have not loved God with our whole heart that we have not heard the cry of the needy, that we have turned away when people in darkness have needed us most. Forgive us, we pray, O oh God, that we might live as your people of the light. Pour out your blessings, almighty God, on these gifts of bread and wine, that they would be for us the body and blood of our Savior, Jesus Christ. That they would be light for us. That as we feel the bread touch our lips, as we feel the wine touch our tongue, that we would feel the light of Christ and the presence of Jesus coming in. Pour out your blessings, almighty God, on these gifts and on these, your sons and daughters, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. If those who are helping with communion would come at this time. And this is our first Sunday communion, so uh, our tradition is to remain at the altar 
and uh, you will be dismissed with prayer after each um, offering of the Holy Eucharist. And the table is set and the meal is prepared. Won't you come? God, of these gifts, we give you thanks for that of your son's body and for his blood, which make us whole, which make us children of the light. Amen. thank you for your gift to Jesus. We thank you for what he did for us. Be with us as we go throughout the new year, Lord. Continue to shine the light on us and bless us. We love and praise you. Amen. Please take hands.
God, we kneel before you at this table, provided by your son and the love that you had for us. As we hold hands to one another, let the love that you have for us course through the hands clasped here at the altar and be to us the blessings that we need in this time of our hour of need. In your name we pray. Amen. opportunity to be in this church today to praise your name. We thank you for the birth of Christ that was the perfect gift that you sent him that he might save us. Let's go forth in 2018 and try to live our lives that will be a great reflection on you. I know it's been a long service, but bear with us one more, one more time. Turn to page 206. We're changing the last hymn. And we won't sing all three stanzas, and it will be fairly new to some of you, but you may recognize the melody as Jamie was playing it in the background. In him there is no darkness at all. The night and the day are both alike. The Lamb is the light of the city of God. Shine in my heart, Lord Jesus. Let's stand together and sing the first verse. I want to walk as a child of the light. <coughs>
let us join hands for our benediction.